there's two major reasons, three major reasons, four major reasons, five major reasons why I'm not in pain. See, when your toes are splayed out with this product here, this sock, which is called Happy Feet, with every step I take, my toes are apart. Imagine having no function of your hand. Imagine if I'm like, dude, try to move your pinky away from the rest of your fingers and you were like, mmm, you're like Uma Thurman and you're trying to, and kill Bill and you're trying to move your pinky toe and you can't. Wiggle your big toe. You can't like move at all. Remember she could, her like lower body was like paralyzed, trying to just wiggle her toes, I believe she was trying to do. We have all this functionality in the hands but if our hands were in like mittens all the time, we just walked around like this all the time, we'd probably like start to lose a lot of that. And obviously the hands should be able to move better than the feet, I believe, right? But we should be able to do some stuff with our feet. So our feet are normally crammed into commercial shoes that siphon them off. Men's shoes are, from a little research that I did, very little research, but some research I did, a man's, men's shoes in the United States are about 22% more narrow in a similar size uh, of a female shoe. So I'm not saying females don't have problems with their feet too, but a male shoe, because they don't want it to turn into this uh, giant pancake uh, snowshoe, a dad shoe, right? They want it to be aesthetic, and for it to be aesthetic and sleek, it has a narrow uh, toe box, and it comes in really narrowly uh, at like the arch, which, people a lot of people don't have arches a lot of people don't know this but most of the best athletes in the world here in america anyway basketball football predominantly a lot of those athletes from the strength coaches i spoke with they are flat-footed which is supposed to be bad <laughs> right but it gives you an idea that these poor guys in these basketball shoes and these cleats imagine how good they'd be if their shoes and their cleats actually fit they would be a wrecking machine and maybe it would even prolong the career of someone like a kobe bryant who had a career-ending injury with an achilles did play for a really long time so maybe he couldn't get rid of that but if he had shit that fit better i know he had his own shoe but <laughs> i can guarantee that probably didn't fit very well you ever see lebron's feet anyway <laughs> just kind of look at what's happening with these toes as i'm walking And if I practice a little bit of this, which I encourage everyone to practice, which is simple head over foot. It's not your head, it's not your head over your foot. It's not your head over your foot necessarily like this. Although that could be if you were like lunging maybe, or if you were going upstairs. Going upstairs, you might go whoop, 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 whoop. And you might not even recognize that you're doing this much movement. If you're especially going up two stairs at a time, you'd be going whoosh, whoosh. Next time you go up the stairs, check it out. Especially if you do two stairs at a time, you'll be going and you'll be like, oh yeah, wow. But just in walking, you don't have to really be forward. You can be tall and you're gonna be here. An internal, external rotation. So if we just deadlift our hands, bang, 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 bang. If we just deadlift our hands, we get there. And we're not, I'm not going like this. You know, like that's confusing. I'm going here, here, here. Head over foot, palm up. 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 I know, yeah, but, yeah, but. I can't turn my arm, my shoulder hurts. I know, just whatever version of this you can do. So we're looking for shoulder rotation. Boom, shoulder rotation. Right, internal, internal rotation, external rotation. Internal rotation, whoosh, external rotation. Internal, external, internal, external. You walk into a room and you walk like this. And I was like, who the fuck's that guy? And you're still a nobody, but it's like you're walking like you're somebody. You can kind of picture your head going over the kind of outsides of your foot here is kind of what I envision in it. And I might not even be moving my head that much, but that would be, that would me be, that would be me uh, going all the way over here. 
Why do I teach this? Why am I coaching this? Why would anybody care? It's because people are so stiff that they can't move their spine anymore. Watch people walk. I've been doing this for the last 20 years, watching people walk, watching people stand, looking at people's shoes. That's why I created a shoe with Reebok about 15 years ago, 10, 10 years ago. The Reebok CrossFit Lite TR, the powerlifting shoe that I created with them. Wide toe box, then all these toe box companies started popping up everywhere. This is part of human movement. While I'm showing you, I might as well show you. Watch the movement of the spine as I'm walking. Try to have your feet straight and just try to go head over foot. Be silly with it, be a little weird with it. Like really move, like move around a lot. Who's watching, who cares? Give us a fuck. Have fun with it. Head over foot, head over foot, head over foot. Head over foot, head over foot, head over foot, head over foot. Take this lumbar, see this like butt thing that I got going on here? Take that, decompress the spine a bit, which would put me here and my shoulders kind of down, right? Which is weird. Shoulders come up, ribs come up. Get that bodybuilder kind of lat spread thing going. Try to find a happy medium. We don't want to be like over flexed and over stiff. So we'll let some of that go to fix your head, fix that nerd neck, this thing everyone's got to fix that. All we do is go like this, just look up, bring the chin back down. Once you get to be level, shove the chin towards the neck. Boop. <laughs> do your best to kind of stay there and you can let it kind of naturally just hang from there. You don't have to be super stiff. But now that we, we checked in and we did all that stuff, we can get back to our walk. And as I turn around here and walk this way, watch me from the back. And you'll see the spine moving. I don't believe my spine used to move this way before. I have zero pain these days. My body feels amazing. No lower back pain, no shoulder pain, no hip pain, no pain in the knees. And I have more activity now than I ever have before. There's two major reasons, three major reasons, four major reasons, five major reasons why I'm not in pain. The five major reasons are, reason number one, I got out of shoes. This is in no particular order. Reason number two, I've been practicing a lot of myofascial release. Reason number three is I wear protective gear when I'm training, allows me to overload, handle more weight for more reps and more sets to keep me healthy and to keep me strong. And when I'm strong and vibrant for other things without the wear and tear, it's easier for me to get through those other things without those things being so expensive to me uh, that they crush me. The other thing uh, that's been huge, that's been vital is head over foot. And there's actually two more things, which I think brings us up to maybe like five or six. Uh, sleep, get your phone away from you at night the best you can. Try to keep the house dark uh, when it starts to be about an hour from bedtime. Work on your sleep. Do your best to just make your quality of sleep better. Wear some mouth tape. That's been an easy hack for me. I wear a product called Hostage Tape. Uh, I've, they're partners of mine on my podcast. I've been talking about it everywhere. Hostage tape is going to really help because uh, breathing in and out of the nose during sleep uh, is going to give you a more restful, higher quality of sleep. You can look at look it up. You can look into it more. Uh, but the best thing is just for you just to try it. And last but not least, which is super important, is what we consume, what we eat. I predominantly eat meat and fruit, meat and fruit meat and fruit and i see all these little tiktokers out there talking about the lion diet which i think is cool because people are trying basically a carnivore diet uh, but i've been on this carnivore path uh, i've been meat based carnivore based for i don't know last 30 years or so yes there's been influences of other stuff because sometimes you need some of those other things to get big sometimes you need those other things uh, for energy because uh, protein by itself is not a great energy source. It's good to have fats in there as well. And it's good to have carbs in there as a great energy source as well. So meat, potatoes, fruit, things like that. That's what I eat. Uh, that's what I've been eating for a really long time. And that's still the same way that I eat. I don't, it's really, really rare for me to eat junk. Pizza, fast food, candy, ice cream. 
once a month or something like that, maybe. 